And that's the big trick, right? That's the tricky thing. That's the paradox of life. Is that if you want to stop being a failure, the first step is advertising. Ah, this is kind of interesting. And, and Broxane is saying, I'm a psychologist, but had little to no benefit from therapy myself for anxiety and depression. Although I know the literature supports efficacy over placebo, my experience creates an internal conflict within me when thinking of exercising the profession of a therapist. I'm considering changing career path because of this and I feel lost. So I think this is great. So, I mean, not that you're in the situation, the situation is unfortunate, bro. But I think this is a, a great example. Also, you may not be a bro. I think this is a great example of like, it's that internal conflict that you've got to potentially work through with a therapist, right? So I don't know if you ever did that, but going to a therapist and saying, hey, I, I'm not sure if this is working, even though I'm a psychologist, like, I don't, I don't know exactly what to do about that. It's working through that internal conflict, which will ab absolutely be the right thing, right? Because as long as that internal conflict is there, like, you're not going to benefit from therapy. That's the first thing you need to go through, go to. OK. Uh, yeah, so but why do I want to play solo so much? Because when you're playing solo, you, no one has to see your failures. That's why we love playing solo, right? So you guys ever do this thing where, like, if you know, like, if you're going to a LAN party and you haven't played a game, that you, like, practice it first before the LAN party so you don't get owned? If you do that, then you know why you play solo. It's one thing to be a failure. It's another thing to advertise it. And that's the big trick, right? That's the tricky thing. That's the paradox of life. Is that if you want to stop being a failure, the first step is advertising it. That's how you get help. And help is OP. Like, just think about this for a second, chat. Think about this. There are people out there who are better at this than you are. And you can try to learn it yourself the hard way, but like you can just like go and get help, and they'll tell you how to do it. People are there to help you. People love helping you. Like, think about you. Like, you love helping other people. Y'all are great, but it's, it's devastating, but remaining a failure is more, is, how can I say this? For most people, they would rather remain a hidden failure than advertise being a failure and no longer being a failure. We'll, we'll choose hidden failure over public success any day of the week. And that's one of the most devastating things about being human. And I think our current like internet-based environment only exacerbates that. So let go of ego, meditate, you know, and let yourself suck. Like, that's okay. Like, this is the other problem that happens is we identify with sucking, right? So we don't say to ourselves, like we, we don't think about ourselves as inexperienced. All we see is our performance. So like we, we attribute our failures not to a lack of inexperience, but to personality issues. So we say like, oh, like I am lazy or I'm an idiot or like other people are successful. We use these be verbs, are, am. I am this way. I am a failure. I am an incel. It's an identification with a thing. You know, I am... Like, it, we don't say, I just haven't had a girlfriend yet. Like, that's not what we say. I haven't had is, like, very different. Like, we identify with the thing. And if you look at research on psychedelics and meditation, the method through which psychedelics and meditation seem to work is they change your perception of identity. So they change the identification that you have with a particular condition. So people who will use psychedelics, like the ones that use it in a therapeutic environment and the ones that have good experiences will say things like, I realize that I am not a failure. Like, I'm, uh, what I am is different from a failure. Like, and so then they, they separate that out. Therapy can do that. Meditation can do that. You have to divorce yourself from, like, the outcomes of your actions. And when you start defining yourself as a failure, that's when you're screwed, right? Because then all kinds of, like, subconscious calculations change. And I've come to appreciate over the last couple of weeks, like, the value of subconscious ca calculations. And your mind is like constantly calculating about what you can do and what you can't do. And if you perceive yourself as a failure, you're kind of screwed there. Yeah, so Gravy Boat is saying a bad trip on LSD is as helpful as a good one. You still learn about yourself, albeit it's chaos. So that's where I'd say that you're lucky. So I've worked with, unfortunately, too many people who have had bad trips that have like basically permanently disabled them. 
So I've had people who have like PTSD from LSD trips and they're like not able to hold jobs. Um, one person described it to me as permanent anxiety. Like this, so they feel anxious like constantly and like I couldn't, I really couldn't help them. I tried, I just didn't, it was just weird. Like I couldn't find any like root to their anxiety or whatever. It's weird. So I, I, I wouldn't really advocate substance use, especially psychedelics. It's just, you're playing with fire. So that's also true of like advanced meditation techniques. So like my teachers told me, for example, that, you know, some techniques that I was taught, like I shouldn't do unless I was like with them and like out in the woods. So deep meditation techniques, the ones that are a little bit more like hallucinatory are, have been described to me as playing with fire. So even like the Kundalini Shakti is like viewed as fire that can like consume you. So it can burn away like all of your negative karmas or it can burn away everything. So those practices need to be done with, with a lot of care and caution.